Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Sunday. It is 6 a.m. this morning. I got a lot of energy. I slept like nine hours yesterday. You were out and about though. Yeah, I went to the um, te the Butterfly and Pollinator mm -hmm. Festival at Confluence Park. Confluence Park is beautiful if you've never been. The weather was beautiful. And I'm really excited because before I went, I found monarch caterpillars on my milkweed at home. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to talk to the butterfly professionals at the festival about, oh my gosh, I have like six caterpillars. How do I keep them alive? <laughs> so I'm going to end up What's going. The um, you need a, You need to like tent your mm. little oh, milkweed area. So I see. I'm going to build a nice little fort for my six caterpillars. <laughs> Awesome. You know, I'm going down the rabbit hole, but anything I could do. That's amazing. <laughs> and you know, it is chilly out there this morning, so that the tent would help, I guess, yeah. keep them a little yeah. bit warm. <laughs> yeah, we are actually seeing temperatures in the 40s this morning, y'all. Temperatures are in the low 40s up in the hill country, 42 in Kerrville, 49 in Hondo, 49 in Gonzales, and 54 in Pleasanton. This is actually the coolest we've been since April. So a nice welcome change here. One thing you'll notice is a little bit more cloud cover than yesterday today because we're getting some uh, Pacific moisture in the form of cirrus clouds moving across uh, San Antonio and South Central Texas. So today's forecast calls for once again another fall like forecast. 67 at noon, 73 for the afternoon high. Not as breezy as yesterday. We'll only have northeast winds at 5 miles per hour. The sun will set at 701. So how long will these crisp and cool mornings last? I've got that forecast update for you coming soon. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man dead after a crash on 410 and Roosevelt. That's on the city's south side. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, what do we know about this incident? Well, we do know this happened close to midnight. Uh, the crash causing the eastbound lanes of 410 to close for hours. But this is what the scene looked like. Police say a man in a vehicle rear ended an 18 wheeler at the entrance of 410 and Roosevelt. The vehicle quickly bursting into flames, trapping the man inside. Because of that, firefighters were not able to rescue him. Of course, this crash causing eastbound lane closures for several hours. Police tell us the driver of that 18 wheeler was not injured. Now, Max, Sarah, at this time, police Police don't are unsure if alcohol was a factor, but of course the investigation is ongoing. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Police are trying to figure out what happened that led to a woman being stabbed at a bus stop early this morning, but they're getting conflicting stories. So this happened around 2.30 in the morning near the corner of Veracruz and South Brazos Street, just west of downtown. Officers received a call from a woman who said she had been stabbed. When they arrived at the scene, they found the woman bleeding heavily from her arm. She was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Officers were getting different stories from the woman, so they are still trying to sort out the details. A family shattered after their loved one was shot and killed allegedly by her boyfriend. All of this happening just this past week. 31-year-old Sarah Silva had just started working as a teacher for La Petite Academy. San Antonio police tell us Silva and 30-year-old Evan Held, they were arguing when Silva locked herself in a bedroom with her 71-year-old mother. This all happening at their home on El Monte Boulevard on Wednesday. Police say Held, the boyfriend, fired several rounds into the door, hitting Silva's mother, killing Silva. Now, Silva's family said they had no idea she may have been in an abusive relationship withheld, and now they hope this tragedy serves as a reminder to other victims of abuse. Love's blind sometimes, and you, you won't want to reach out for help, which if there's any women out there that are being abused, they should walk out the relationship. Don't wait, you know, walk away from that because y'all don't need that in y'all's lives. As for the investigation, Held turned himself into Dallas police after he was wanted for murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Right now, he is currently waiting extradition back to Bear County. Well, the latest now on the deadly shooting in Houston yesterday involving three Harris County deputies. Authorities say the weapon used in the ambush at a nightclub in North Houston was an AR-15 style rifle. The deputies were working security jobs at the club when two of them responded to a report of a robbery outside just after 2 a.m. While the deputies were trying to arrest someone, a man with an AR-15 style rifle shot them from behind. A third deputy was also shot when he came up to help. Deputy Kareem Atkins was one of the first deputies shot and ended up dying from that injury. The other two deputies are recovering from their injury. So far, authorities are still searching for the man responsible for the shooting.
Now to the latest on the battle against COVID. More vaccine requirements being made in big cities around the country, even as COVID cases continue to fall. ABC's Christine Sloan shows us the battles in different areas and how some residents are feeling about it. As COVID case numbers continue to fall nationally, more vaccine requirements continue to go into effect. But not everyone is willing to roll up their sleeves. In Chicago, a court battle is heating up between the city and police force, about half of which is unvaccinated. We've seen from uh, the Fraternal Order of Police, and particularly the leadership, is a lot of misinformation, a lot of half-truths, and frankly, flat-out lies in order to induce an insurrection. The city announcing those who do not get vaccinated vaccinated will be placed on a no pay status. The police union filing a motion to dismiss the mayor's complaint. In Seattle, the police department is making preparations ahead of a Monday deadline for all officers to provide proof of vaccination. The concern that the department may lose hundreds of officers who are choosing not to get vaccinated. In Everett, Washington, about 200 Boeing employees staged a protest against the company's vaccine mandate that will go into effect on December 8th. Meantime, mask rules are now loosened in San Francisco. Masks no longer required in some environments if everyone is fully vaccinated and there aren't more than 100 people. It's a nice feeling that the city decides it's safe for us to take our masks off again. And it's just a nicer feeling to connect with colleagues on that level. And this week, a CDC panel will meet on recommendations for both Moderna and Johnson & Johnson boosters. If authorized, the boosters could be out at the end of the week. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, a group of 17 U.S. missionaries, including children, have been kidnapped by a gang in Haiti. That's according to a voice message sent to various religious missions by an organization with direct knowledge of the incident. The message said the missionaries were on their way home from building an orphanage. It went on to say this is a special prayer alert, saying they hoped the gang members would show remorse. The mission's field director is working with the U.S. Embassy. Well, former President Bill Clinton hoping to be released from the hospital later today. A spokesman for the Clintons said that the former president making excellent progress. Now, he is expected to continue to receive antibiotics before being released. On Friday, President Biden said he had spoken with Clinton and that Clinton is not in any serious condition. Clinton, the 75-year-old former president, admitted to the hospital back on Tuesday for what was believed to have been a urological infection and actually spread to his bloodstream. Time now, 607, 50 degrees out. How about those Roadrunners, Max? How about them? 7-0, and oh, big homecoming win, undefeated. We're going to have highlights of the big win. Still ahead. So a man put a lot of hard work in growing this <laughs> massive pumpkin in the country, but just for it to be disqualified uh, for the competition. Yeah, we'll tell you what happened. That's coming up. And back here at home, ooh, chilly, feeling like fall. Did you do your fall dance today? I'm doing it right now. All right, we're going to be back. We're going to check it with Sarah's Bye, V. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Officially feels like fall. You made it outside yesterday. A little chillier this morning, though. Yeah, no, definitely. I def <laughs> I really did need the fleece this time, Sarah, because it it's 50 degrees. Is this going to stick around, or is this like a you know, one day kind of thing. We'll have another cool morning tomorrow, Sarah and Max. And you know, temperatures will warm up today, so it's not going to be chilly all day long. It is going to be comfortable. Hey, we had a bit of a spooky sight in the sky Ooh. last night. Let me take a look at this picture sent in through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. This is a moon halo. Isn't that cool? It's uh, cirrus clouds oh, are made of ice crystals, and the way that uh, the light refracts around the ice crystals creates this perfect circle around the moon. Isn't that really awesome? Yeah, and we're going to have a lot of these cirrus clouds today for us. They're going to be around all day long, so we'll have a wispy hue to the sky and uh, temperatures will warm up. So we're currently at 49 degrees, but by this afternoon we'll be topping off in low to mid 70s, right around 77 in Pleasanton, 75 in Hondo, 73 in Kerrville, 73 in New Braunfels, 71 in Rock Springs and 79 in Del Rio. Outside right now, now a beautiful, cool start to this Sunday morning. It's 49 degrees. It feels like 49. We're not really having much of a wind chill out there. And the reason for that is 
The winds are not all that strong. They've calmed down quite a bit. Now it's 46 in Holotus, 41 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 43 in Bandera, 48 in Rio Medina, 42 in Comfort, and 50 in New Braunfels. A wider view here, 54 this morning as you're stepping out of the door in Pleasanton, 57 in Del Rio, and 54 in Carrizo Springs. So we are a couple of degrees cooler than how we started off the day yesterday. We had calm wind conditions, clear enough skies to allow for a lot of that heat from the day to escape back out into space. And we will see that sunrise here shortly and as it does so temperatures will rise with it 62 at 10 67 around noon we're gonna have those cirrus clouds all day long winds from the northeast at five miles per hour a very pleasant afternoon topping off only right near 73 degrees and the sun will set at 701 it'll become chilly pretty quickly we'll be in the 50s and 60s by 10 p.m. now on the radar and satellite here's the look at where our cold front is from uh, Friday moving on off into the Atlantic Ocean. It is quiet across the U.S. The reason for that is a big high pressure system creating sinking air and preventing any kind of precipitation from developing. Uh, this high pressure system though, air moves in a clockwise fashion around a high pressure system. Around it right now, it's very dry with dew points in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. That's really pleasant and low humidity. But as that high pressure system moves to the east, it's gonna pick up that Gulf of Mexico moisture and move it back into South Central Texas by Tuesday. So we've got today and tomorrow with a low humidity and by Tuesday you'll notice a bit more mugginess in the air. It's not going to be oppressively humid, but it is going to be noticeable, especially in the form of morning clouds on Tuesday. And then a front is expected to move through North Texas by Thursday and there are some questions about whether or not this front is actually going to make it to San Antonio or if it's it's just going to be too weak to make it all the way to San Antonio. What we do suspect is we do suspect that there will be some areas of rain Thursday, even through Saturday, isolated showers and storms. So we're not expecting a big rainmaker in any way, but still, uh, we are going to have a chance for that isolated showers and storms Thursday through Saturday. So enjoy the last two days with low humidity and we'll start off tomorrow chilly as well. 51 for the morning low. Love it, love it, love it. There you go. Thank you, Sarah Spivey. 615, 50 degrees out. So the heaviest pumpkin in the country, guess oh. what? It's not going in any record books. The reason why is next. Challenge accepted. You know, you have a garden. You could grow a pumpkin like that. I don't think I can. Not with this heat. He deflated. <laughs> time, time now is 615, 50 degrees out. Pick three. Big lotto numbers today. 990, Fireball 5. Daily 4, 9, 4, 6, 8. Fireball 1. Cash 5, 4, 15, 21, 24, 32. Texas Lotto, 26, 27, 32, 36, 37, 42. And Powerball. Did you play? I didn't. Um, Not high enough. You're the worst. 30, 31, 41, 42, 48. Powerball 3, Power Play 3. Good there morning. we go. Okay, so a Wisconsin man grew the heaviest pumpkin mm. in the country this fall, weighing in over 2,500 pounds. However, it's not going in any record books because it was disqualified from the competition. That is so terrible. So upset. St. Hence James Grow explains what went wrong. Uh, this is a giant pumpkin, weighs in at about, weighs in at 2,520 pounds. While this is the heaviest pumpkin in the country, it's not going down in the record books that way. It cracked. But before we get into that, meet the grower. My name's Mike Schmidt and I grow giant pumpkins. Pumpkins are like ice cream. Everyone loves them. Some people say we're crazy, but you know, we're just people that like to have a little fun out in the dirt. Mike grew this gargantuan gourd about 30 miles west of Fond du Lac. It weighs 2,520 pounds. This pumpkin pro would have won this year, and so you're looking at a pumpkin that would have been worth $20,000. But unfortunately, from internal pressures and the awkward way it was growing, it cracked. That disqualified him from all competitions this year. The crack was the size of a fingernail. It happens. There's no crying in pumpkin growing. Sounds like he needed a pumpkin patch. Mike grew three pumpkins this year and all his pumpkins had similar fates, but there's no time to sulk. I know I can do it again, so we just gotta look forward to the future and do it again. Hopefully next time, the great pumpkin gods spare him and he can put his name in the record books. 
And that was Jane Grove reporting. A couple things. One, no crying when it comes to pumpkins. Absolutely Two, not. We get assignments sometimes. Imagine getting the assignment of the pumpkin fiasco. Best assignment ever. So the Safeway World Championship pumpkin way off in California pays $9 a pound to the winning gourd grower. So you heard Mike. If he would have won, he would have won at least $20,000, if not for that fingernail size. Oh my crack. gosh. So he like, was so positive about it. Too. So optimistic. There's no crying in pumpkin growing. There's crying when you lose $20,000. I would be crying and very upset. So I'm now 621, 50 degrees out. Hey, let's take a look at some birthdays. This is Anthony. Happy Aww. birthday, Anthony. He's four years old. And next up, we have. Autumn, 25. Happy birthday, Autumn. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures. KSAT.com slash birthdays. Include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning. Welcome back. Birds up, boys and girls. Homecoming and what a showing. For the first time in UTSA program history, the Roadrunners are 7-0. and They earned that win in a stylish shutout fashion, 45-0. We know the star's name, Sincere McCormick, 13 carries, 117 yards. Of course, an 81-yard non-scoring run. UTSA totaling 261 yards. Frank Harris, QB, 12 of 19, 125, two touchdowns. Joshua Cephas, four catches, 63 yards. Both of those touchdown catches from Frank Harris. Huge shouts to the defense, though. Two pick sixes, UTSA only allowing 102 total yards. Rice did not stand a chance. So next weekend, another test. Let's see if we can go 8-0, taking on Louisiana Tech. And can't forget about our other local teams. Cameron Ward threw for 388 yards, connected with Taylor Grimes for a record four touchdowns. Incarnate Ward beating Nichols 38-21. And Trinity rolling past Millsaps College 46 to 0. So, really, just a great overall day. We got UTSA, Trinity, UIW, three in a row. I know. San Antonio teams. Love it. Will UTSA be ranked? I really hope so. That Sincere McCormick tweeted out, rank us now. I retweeted it. Rank so, there you go. Us now. I like that. Right. I'll start that up. 626, 50 degrees out. Okay, so Saws is shutting off water services next week for customers with past due bills in our next half hour. What you need to know if you still have some balance due in your account. And the pandemic has hit so many people so hard. But now, are our children suffering just ahead? How to help your children with possible depression? Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. 6.30 this morning, October 17th. It feels like October. I can't yes. get over this. I'm so we hit excited. The 40s this morning. I know. It's insane. I was like, oh, I actually need to like bring like not just like my little coat, my mm -hmm. my big coat. I know it's a little dramatic, but big coat. that's what I need. A big coat. We need a graphic, Sarah Spivey, big coat weather. Big coat weather for a South Texas girl. I'll get right <laughs> off. Sounds like a good I'll novel. Right I was gonna say great book. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but you know, you won't need it for long because it's going to get comfortable this afternoon, not necessarily chilly. I love this picture that uh, this viewer Aww. sent in, Skywatcher sent in through our KSAT Weather Authority app. How does my neighbor come up with ideas for skeleton displays? Skeleton planning meetings, of course. <laughs> oh man, I got to think of uh, some good puns for October. Max and Sarah, that's your next assignment. Okay, 49 degrees outside. This is the coolest we have been since April of this year. So almost six months here. Uh, nice to see temperatures dipping down into that chilly range for us, especially for those wanting it to feel a little bit more like fall. It's 42 in Kerrville. And by the way, temperatures may drop another degree or two before we see the sunrise here. 53 in Pleasanton, 57 in Del Rio, 52 in Carrizo Springs. We are seeing cirrus clouds continue to move in and that'll uh, allow for those wispy cirrus clouds to be in the sky throughout the day today. So uh, that's going to keep us from getting too, too warm. In fact, we'll be looking at a high temperature in the low 70s. Another great day to head out to the pumpkin patch. We're running out of pumpkin patch days, but today is going to be a good one. We'll spend most of the morning in the 60s and in the afternoon we'll be in the 70s, low 70s for the high temperature. How long will this nice fall weather last? I'll tell you coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man behind bars after San Antonio police say he was involved in a shooting last Sunday. So according to the arrest affidavit, 27 year old Donald Maltavo and 22 year old Miguel Maldonado allegedly tried to shoot someone for 
what is written down as being a snitch. Now, Maldonado's mugshot not available. Police say the two men went to an apartment complex where they knew the victim would be. They chased him when they saw him in the vehicle, allegedly shooting in the victim's direction at the same time. Now, police say Montalvo and Maldonado eventually crashed and ran from the scene. Both were arrested, now facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Also new this morning, one man dead after a major crash on I-10 and Roosevelt, causing some lane closures. And that's all this happening on the city's south side. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, do police know what caused this crash? Well, that's a good question, Sarah. Right now, police are investigating and haven't exactly determined if alcohol was even a factor. We, knew, we do know that man was pronounced dead at the scene, but take a look at this, what that scene looked like just a couple of hours ago. This all happening um, on Roosevelt and 410. Close to midnight, police say a man in a vehicle rear-ended this 18-wheeler at the entrance of 410 and Roosevelt. The vehicle quickly bursting into flames, trapping the man inside. And because of that, firefighters were not able to rescue him. Police tell us the driver of that 18-wheeler was not injured. Now, the victim has not been identified. Of course, this case remains under investigation. We'll provide you updates as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, don't forget, SAWS will continue water shutoffs on Tuesday for customers with past due bills. On Friday, they announced a temporary halt on shutting off customers' water due to lack of payment will end after a year and a half. But SAWS officials say the good news is that most accounts with delinquent balances have been automatically enrolled in four-year payment plans. If customers enrolled in those payment plans make 18 months of payments, Plus, their current bill, SAWS will write off the rest of the overdue balance. If you're currently past due on your SAWS bill, you have two options online. You can either set up a payment plan or apply for financial assistance. You can find more information about all this right now on our website at KSAT.com. Well, during COVID, parents have had heavy burdens. They have stress, they have responsibility, they have to worry about themselves, but also they have to worry about if their children are struggling. There's a growing worldwide concern about depression and suicide among our youngest population, but the signs of depression in children can be different than those in teenagers and adults. David Sears explains to make sure your child isn't struggling with depression alone. Depression can arise as early as age three. Pandemic isolation, struggling with virtual schooling, and family-related stress all contributed to a rise in mental health concerns for children. According to Mental Health America, last year over 2.3 million kids suffered with severe depression. The thing that we have to look for are age-adjusted manifestations of those symptoms. Symptoms of depression in youth include being persistently sad or irritable over several weeks, sleep disturbances, fatigue, no longer enjoying the things they used to enjoy, not being motivated to engage in activity, expressing negativity towards themselves or others, and discussing thoughts of death. The key to helping children fight off depression. For parents to be very aware of their child's emotional state. If you notice these signs in your child, get help immediately. Also, spend more time outside, take walks, play outdoor games, and get them involved in social activities. Depression may be more treatable early in life, during a time of rapid brain development and developmental change, and early treatment can help to avoid relapses, personality, and medical disorders later in life. David Sears, KSA 12 News. In your morning headlines, New York real estate heir Robert Durst is in the hospital after contracting COVID-19. This comes just days after he was sentenced in a two-decade-old murder case. Durst's defense attorney says Durst is on a ventilator. The 78-year-old was sentenced on Thursday to life in prison for the murder of his best friend Susan Berman back in the year 2000. His attorney says Durst was very sick in the courtroom. All right, it is Sunday morning. Don't worry, we have big game coverage. First up, Como Ender Stadium, number four Johnson taking on Madison. QB one, quarter one to tight end one, number 87. Boom, Gonzalez, senior tight end, rumble, big man, rumble right to the five yard line. And then here we go with Ben McGreary breaking the plane. That's up 14-7, but don't worry. Mavs answer back, Miguel Becker racing untouched, looking like Lamar Jackson out there. Putting in the speedy ability, barn burner game. Gotta love high scoring matchups. This was just one of them. Johnson ends up winning 42 to 35. A bunch of great games. We have all the highlights right now. Just head to ksat.com. Sam Houston, 48. Jefferson, 17. 
And then, pretty sure, Sarah Spive, you're a Clark alum, right? Yes. Well, your team almost pulled it out. Okay. Roosevelt, 30, Clark, 27. If you're still in the need for more Pro football, football, don't worry. Government. We got a I'll bunch to talk Jimmy about. Slaughter. We got two great games today. Should be great games. Texans, Colts. Texans looking for a comeback. They almost had it last weekend. Almost beat the Patriots. Let's see if they can get that W today at noon. And then, of course, how about them Cowboys? Cowboys. Taking on the Patriots. 325. Big game. Ooh, we shall see. What are you doing today? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, okay. I'm still trying to figure out. I know I'll probably watch the Cowboys game. You know, I have to. I have to. I'll probably clean the house with the Cowboys game on. There you go. Open the doors. Yeah. You get the fresh air. That's yeah. what I did yesterday. I opened the patio door. As Texas much game. as Max walks outside, that's what happens. Yeah, sure. Opens the windows. Time <laughs> now, 637, 50 degrees out. All right, so we're talking all things fall, mm -hmm. but what you about... Do your fall feeling dance? Fall, but what about Halloween? Ooh. So what is your favorite candy okay. and what is the least favorite? So think about it. So next on GMSA, the result of the annual Halloween candy survey. Oh. I didn't know we had one of these. Plus, scientists finding evidence of water in the atmosphere of Jupiter's icy moon. We have the details of discovery next. Give us a preview. What's your least favorite candy? Ah, uh, I don't know. Like any, like the licorice candy? No. Oh. Yuck. I like liquor. What's not yucky is, of course you do. <laughs> What's not yucky is this weather, 50 degrees. It's beautiful outside at 638. Sarah Spivey, when we come back, have our full forecast. Okay, so this is really cool. Scientists have found evidence of water in the atmosphere of Jupiter's icy moon Europa. NASA says its Hubble Space Telescope observed water vapor over a large area of Europa's atmosphere. Interestingly, the water vapor was only present in one hemisphere. Mm. They don't know why that is the case. NASA says Europa has a very smooth surface and the solid ice crust looks like cracked eggshell. Oh. The interior has a global ocean with more water than found on Earth, and here's my favorite part, okay. could possibly harbor life as we know it. All right, so from planets to candy, here's a topic worth discussing. What is America's favorite and least favorite Halloween candies? Let's see the list and then we'll go over it, okay? All right, <laughs> All right so re Retail Me Up came up with this list based mm -hmm. on the 1,000 people they surveyed. Oh, here it is. <laughs> M&Ms, really? was the favorite it. among the candies. Peanut M&M's. Okay. <laughs> but it just narrowly beat out Reese's. Let's go. I know. So you can see this full list, on, of course, on KSAT.com. But also, it continues. They have Kit Kats, mm -hmm. Snickers, Hershey bars, Twix, a lot of chocolate I'm in there. I'm just amazed by the approval ratings. I, we can't get 54% of the country to agree on anything, but apparently, they like Reese's. <laughs> and then Skittles on there as well. You know, I'm not a big Skittles I guy. noticed that Skittles and candy corn here are the least mm. liked oh. candies. I like and Skittles. I do too, and I don't mind candy corn. That was so well said. I don't mind candy corn. Yeah, it's not my fave. Yeah. You know what's really Would good? you say it's your top five? No. Okay. No. I think Skittles with a glass of red wine is really good. What? Adulting. Hmm. <laughs> Adult trick or treating. I don't know if the flavor profile of Skittles <laughs> complements <clears throat> a bold red, but. It's there you fine. go. All right, let's take a look outside with the live cam right now. It is 49 degrees out there at the airport. By the way, this is the first time we've been in the 40s since April 21st, <laughs> the coolest we've been. That's 179 days, almost six months, and temperatures may drop a degree or two before we see the sunrise here. So it'll be interesting to see what our morning low is officially at the airport. 45 though in Helotus, so colder up in the higher elevations. 41 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 42 in Kerrville. I don't know about you, but that's jacket weather for me. So dress in layers today because we're quickly going to warm up uh, back into the 70s this afternoon. 54 at Stinson, 52 in Pleasanton, 57 in Del Rio, all of the KSAT 12 viewing area. Got a little bit of a chill in the air, 48 in Rock Springs. So we will see cirrus clouds today, those wispy clouds high up in the atmosphere. They are wispy because they're made out of ice crystals. So uh, that's going to allow for a beautiful sky, really nice sunsets and sunrises. Uh, we'll be looking at temperatures rising slowly into the low 70s by this afternoon. 
67 at noon and 73 for the afternoon high. Not as breezy as yesterday. We'll only have winds from the north at about 5 miles per hour, and then we'll get cool tonight with temperatures back into the 50s by about 10 p.m. On the radar and satellite, notice how quiet it is across the United States. Now, the reason for that is there's a pretty potent high pressure system creating sinking air, preventing any kind of showers and storms from developing. Now, air moves clockwise around a high pressure system. So as we see this moving off to the east, it's going to pick up that Gulf of Mexico moisture and by Tuesday it'll be noticeably muggy outside. Now we've been enjoying dew points in the 30s and 40s, but by Tuesday those dew points will climb back into the 60s. So we've got a couple of days here with a low humidity today and tomorrow, and then you'll notice it a bit more on Tuesday, especially in the form of morning clouds and our morning lows are going to go up as well. So tomorrow morning, another morning where it'll be chilly, you'll want to dress in layers, but by Tuesday morning, 60s for the morning lows uh, as we see that humidity rise again. Now, as far as rain chances go, it's not looking great for rain this week, but there is a chance Thursday and Friday for some isolated showers and storms, and we've seen plenty of rainfall after Wednesday night, Thursday morning's rain. It might be a good idea to continue to allow those uh, rivers and creeks to drain back out into the Gulf of Mexico. So just to summarize everything I said, a little bit more cloud cover today in the form of cirrus clouds, 73 for the high. Tomorrow, waking up chilly again, 77 for the high. So today is going to be the coolest day of the next seven days. But even then, by the middle of the week, our highs will be in the low to mid 80s, so not all that bad. And then isolated showers and storms in the forecast Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday. No potent cold fronts over the next seven days. Of course, as we head into November, that will likely change. Uh, I, I like this change of weather. What about you guys, Max and Sarah? Only when it's a potent cold front. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Thank you. 647. I can tell y'all are making fun of me. No, I thought 50, it was really cute. <laughs> 50 degrees out. All right, 4.3 million people. That's how many people quit their jobs in August, according to the Labor Department. This is part of what's being called the Great Resignation. The latest numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that the unemployment rate across the country is 4.8%. So what do the numbers look like locally, and what are the latest trends here in San Antonio? Later this morning at 8 a.m. on Leading SA, CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo, Adrian Lopez, joining us live to discuss what we are seeing, what sectors and job markets are being most affected, and where do we go from here? If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Time now, just about 647, 50 degrees out. Okay, well, UT, they lost, Matt. Oh, what a game it was. Had the windows open, got the sunshine, got the cool air, got a loss. We're going to explain next. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, nine, zero, fireball five, daily four, Nine, four, six, eight, fireball one. And your cash five, four, 15, 21, 24, 32. Lotto, Texas, 26, 27, 32, 36, 37, 42. And here we go. Powerball 30, 31, 41, 42, 48. Powerball three, power play three. Good luck. We'll be right back. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Not that happy for a Longhorns fan. It was a tough day, a tough game to watch. Dropping a, another game two weeks in a row after having a big lead and to a second team from Oklahoma. Longhorns leading to start the third, 17-13. But the Horns offense, the run game specifically, Bijan Robinson could not get going. It turned cold. The Cowboys, Oklahoma State Cowboys, this guy, he couldn't do anything in the fourth quarter. Offense just looked stagnant. Oklahoma State would come back, top Texas, 32-24. Not great. Mm -mm. But we got more tests throughout the season. But we got other Big 12, current Big 12 teams to tell you about. Baylor winning big, taking on ranked BYU, 38-24. And then we know we got a lot of Texas Tech fans out here, so huge shouts. You want to guns up? Nothing? 41. There you go. Got to love it. Uh, Oklahoma. Backup quarterback, well, not backup anymore, Caleb Williams taking over, and he took over well. 52 on TCU's 31, and then here we go. Iowa State 33, Kansas State 20. 
But this is really the game we want to talk about. We've been talking about it throughout the morning. A shellacking from Texas A&M. They're staying hot after that win over number one ranked Alabama, taking on Missouri. And let's just let's just be honest. Missouri was not even in the game. People not talking enough about Texas A&M's run game because Isaiah Spiller, Devin A. Chain, they got to be a top three tandem in all of college football. They combined for almost 300 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Look at that. Just walking into the end zone. Missouri didn't stand a chance. Aggies win here, 35-14. Sarah Spivey came over to the desk. She has since left the area. Speaking of leaving the area, a few fly balls leaving the stadium. If you're an Astros fan, we had great news for you yesterday. Today, different sort of news. Red Sox came out slugging in game two of the ALCS. I watched the first Grand Slam live. J.D. Martinez, huge shouts. I say the first Grand Slam because the Red Sox had two Grand Slams in the game. The Red Sox, actually the first MLB team with two Grand Slams in the same playoff game. They win 9-5 series. Now tied up 1-1. One to one. It's pretty upset about the Astros. Yeah. Loss. It's all right. It's a long series. I know, but they played at home. Yeah, they get a couple more games. <laughs> 6.54, 50 degrees now. We'll be right back. Waterman is dead after a major crash on 410 and Roosevelt. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. We do know that crash caused for major closures on eastbound lanes for several hours. The crash happening close to midnight, causing the eastbound lanes to be closed. Police say a man in a vehicle rear-ended this 18-wheeler at the entrance of 410 and Roosevelt. The vehicle quickly bursting into flames, trapping the man inside, and because of that, firefighters were not able to rescue him. Police tell us the driver of that 18 Wheeler was not injured. The victim has not yet been identified. Of course, this case remains under investigation. We'll provide you updates as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA Breaking Overnight, American missionaries kidnapped in Haiti, children among the captured. We're bringing you the latest from the Haitian consulate. Plus, the nation's second largest police department preparing to lose officers over COVID-19 vaccine mandates with requirements going into effect this weekend. The vaccine battle across the country as the CDC releases new data on the shot's effectiveness. And the supply chain disruptions causing shortages ahead of Halloween as a Americans flock to buy costumes, the unique challenges stores are facing this year. It's all ahead here on GMA. Beautiful sunrise out oh, there wow. right now. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. One of the reasons why we're seeing such pretty colors is because of those cirrus clouds made of ice crystals. They sit up higher in the atmosphere and they make for very pretty cotton candy sunrises out there. 48 degrees, so we dropped a degree. This is going to be uh, our coldest morning on record since April 21st. So very, very nice chilly morning out there right now. It's even colder up in the hill country. 41 at Bernie Sage Airfield. 42 in Comfort and 42 in Kerrville. Elsewhere, we're generally seeing temperatures right near about 50 degrees or in the upper 40s. Today, we're going to quickly warm up. We'll already be at 62 by 10. So dress and layers today, 67 by noon. Only a high temperature of 73, though. So it's going to stay comfortable all day long. Northeast winds at 5 miles per hour. And then another chilly start tomorrow morning with a pleasant afternoon. Humidity will return on Tuesday. You can see that, how the morning lows get a little warmer. And then highs will be in the mid 80s for most of this week. A small chance for rain Thursday and Friday of this week. Madam Are you going to run up to the roof and take your sunrise? No, because I try to do one. I don't want to give the followers all like seven followers I have on Instagram too many uh, sunrise, <laughs> sunrise picks. Photos. And I used it yesterday. I don't like to do two days in a row. Oh, the strategy to this. Really yeah, good. that's Today's pretty, is really good. It's pretty planned out. Maybe we could, yeah, there's, there's a little strategy. But speaking of strategy, we got a lot coming up at 8 a.m. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. As Whit Johnson said, the supply chain a mess right now. Part of that problem, truckers, they're mm. quitting. We saw 4.3 million people quit in just August. We're going to be talking to the head of Workforce Solutions, Alamo. What are we seeing here in San Antonio? We'll see you at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines to start the 8 a.m. A man dead after a fiery car crash. We have details on police at the scene. Plus a look at where the job market stands here in San Antonio. We're talking to the CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo live in today's leading essay segment. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 
It is picture perfect out there. 50 degrees to start your Sunday morning. So what is the rest of the weekend? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, October 17th. I got to hand it to Sarah Spivey this morning. She got beautiful pictures I of the sunrise. I heard her little heels go click, click, click. She was like right <laughs> after the show. She was like running up to get that picture. And I heard you come back in, Sarah, and you're like, oh, cold, 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 cold. <laughs> that's, that's a great summary there. Yeah, had to walk up all those flights of stairs to get on the roof and then it was chilly out there definitely it is in fact the coolest morning we've had since april 21st take a look outside right now you can see that uh, we are dealing with a beautiful sunrise here good mixture of mid level clouds and upper level clouds it's 49 degrees outside that is up a degree from our morning low of 48. Elsewhere, we're seeing even cooler temperatures in the higher elevations. 41 at Verde Sage Airfield, 42 in Comfort, 42 in Kerrville, 48 in New Braunfels. We are going to warm up though today fairly nicely into the 70s. Again, we're dealing with these beautiful sunrises because of clouds moving in from the Pacific. Uh, we are looking at cirrus clouds for most of the day. Those wispy thin cirrus clouds that are made out of ice crystals we will be at 67 by noon, 73 for the afternoon high. So a very pleasant fall like forecast for your day today. Northeast winds at five miles per hour. How long will this nice weather last? I've got the answer for you and the forecast coming up in a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man dead after a crash. Here's what we know so far. Police tell us close to midnight, a man in a vehicle rear ended an 18 wheeler at entrance of 410 and Roosevelt. Now that vehicle bursting into flames, trapping the man inside because of that firefighters not able to rescue him. The driver of the 18 wheeler not injured right now. Police still investigating, but they can't tell us if alcohol played a factor at this time. Well, new this morning, a man is behind bars after San Antonio police say he was involved in a shooting last Sunday. According to an arrest affidavit, 27 year old Donald Malt Montalvo and 22 year old Miguel Maldonado allegedly tried to shoot someone for, quote, being a snitch. A mugshot from Maldonado is not available right now. Police say the two men went to an apartment complex where they knew the victim would be and chased him when they saw him in his vehicle, allegedly shooting in the victim's direction. Police say Montalvo and Maldonado eventually crashed and ran from the scene. They were arrested for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. In your top stories, the moratorium of shutting off customers' waters due to lack of payment. That is ending after a year and a half. That means if you don't pay your water bill, you might not have water. San Antonio Water System saws resuming those water shutoffs starting Tuesday. Customers can still make payment plans and can still apply for financial aid if their bill is overdue. If you have any questions about any of the plans going forward, we have all that info right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Meanwhile, the Kamal River is open once again after being closed due to recent flooding. Access to the river for recreational activities is also open. City officials say debris has been cleaned up. However, there could still be some debris below the water surface. River goers are urged to be cautious in the water in case more debris is found. Police are also encouraging river goers to wear life vest while taking part in any activities. 4.3 million people quitting their jobs in August. Now, all of this, according to the Labor Department, it's being part of what's called the Great Resignation. The latest numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics show that the unemployment rate across the country is 4.8%. So, what do the local numbers look like, and what are some of the local trends we're seeing here in San Antonio? To help us break this all down the, by the local perspective, in today's leading essay segment is Adrian Lopez, the CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo. Thank you so much, Adrian, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, as you heard, you know, we saw more than 4 million people quit their jobs across the country in August. Are we seeing that in San Antonio? And if we are, why? Actually, it's a little bit different here for our particular region. The 13 county region is boasting a 4.8% unemployment rate, which is pretty close to the 3.5% um, pre pandemic levels. Uh, we're actually seeing an increase in our labor force as opposed to people dropping off. Well, Adrian, in terms of employment trends, what industries are actually hurting and where are we seeing the most available jobs here in San Antonio? Yeah, I think the labor shortage um, is something that, you know, we experienced pre pandemic and we're seeing uh, even today. Um, we're seeing that across uh, many industries. Uh, healthcare seems to be one of those. It's actually the top one that still is uh, still boasted about 7,000 or so uh, openings. 
Uh, but there are other sectors that are actually, um, you know, suffering just as well uh, for uh, industries like manufacturing and aerospace and others, right? They're still boasting, you know, um, you know, positions that are that are open uh, and still having some level of difficulty trying to fill those positions. Now you mentioned healthcare, but San Antonio are two big industries that are a huge part of our local economy. Leisure, hospitality. What do those numbers look like? Yeah, those numbers are, you know, also are are suffering just as well. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, one that, that that industry is still having some level of recovery. Um, you know, based on certain reports, the full recovery of those is actually not anticipated to about 2024, 2025. Um, but they still have, you know, tons of positions that are actually still vacant even today. So, what does the amount of open jobs mean, and how can it hurt different parts of our local economy? Yeah, so today we have about 47,000 openings based on um, the databases that we actually see. Um, depending on, you know, where, what particular industries, I mean, um, you know, one from, from the perspective of, of hospitality, um, you know, that could affect uh, our ability to, you know, serve uh, the different types of uh, conventions and stuff that, you know, we see uh, coming to the city. That's on the one end. On the manufacturing side, if we are not uh, producing products that, you know, are actually uh, going to be something that's on the shelves of our of our HEBs and those that could affect obviously the supply line associated with products that we tend to see, um, you know, on a daily basis. And we just saw USA increase their minimum wage to twenty one dollars. Is that what it now takes to be competitive to fill the jobs? That's one of the interesting facts or effects of what's happened during the pandemic is the fact that we've seen employers across many different industries increase their salaries. Right. We don't know the full effect of that, but what we do know is the fact that, you know, in employees or job seekers actually now have a lot of options, right? So the market uh, to actually secure those uh, those employees or their job seekers actually just got much tighter. So, you know, the full effects of that we probably won't know for a few months. And are there any upcoming job fairs for people who are looking for these openings? Yeah, we're very excited about our 10th annual uh, Red, White and You uh, job fair, which is a statewide uh, hiring event along with Texas Workforce Commission. That's being hosted on November 4th uh, from 9 uh, to 1 p.m. at the Freeman Coliseum. Awesome. All right, Mr. Lopez, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate your time. Anyone who missed any part of the interview, especially the information on the job fair, we're going to have all that posted on KSAT.com throughout the morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, as temperatures start to get cooler here in San Antonio, Animal Care Services is looking for donations to keep the shelter animals warm. The shelter says they are in need of blankets and towels. However, they cannot take donations of pillows, comforters, curtains, dog clothing and sheets. Those looking to donate these items can take the item to the shelter located at 4710 State Highway on 151. Or you can purchase blankets off the shelter's Amazon wish list. We have a link to that on KSAT.com. Just look for this article. Uh, time now is 808, 50 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA, finding out if ghosts are real oh. and where you can experience some spooks and scares here in town. Plus, a rock star falling off the stage mid-concert. Whoa, we have a look at the moment and the latest on his condition. If you're looking for a non-scary daytime Halloween event that's taking place every day for the rest of this month, I'm going to tell you where you need to head coming up next. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, Sarah Spivey telling us it is the coolest it's been since April 21st. So what is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? Are these cool temps going to stick around? We're going to check in with her in just a bit. This Hispanic Heritage Moment is brought to you by Taco Cabana. The charro and the charreria has its roots dating back to the 16th century and played a very important role on the Mexican haciendas and is the forerunner to what we know today as the American rodeo. During the Mexican Revolution, the large haciendas were divided up and fearing the loss of the charro traditions, the Federación Nacional de Charros was formed in 1933. The oldest association in the United States is right here in San Antonio where continued traditions and skills of the charros are on full display at a Charriada. Not only do men take part in the events, the ladies in the Escaramuza teams impress the crowds with their carefully crafted choreography, which has been described as ballet on horseback. The San Antonio Charros Association's goal is to preserve the history, art, and culture of horsemanship from Mexico for future generations.
morning and welcome back. So some call October spooky season, spooky season, but not everyone wants to be spooked. So if you're looking for some fun filled Halloween themed things to do with your kids, the San Antonio Zoo could be the perfect spot. I love this. Our Jonathan Goto joins us there live. What Zubu is all about. Good morning, <laughs> Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Well, I'm here joined by Hope Roth, Vice President of Marketing for the San Antonio Zoo. And you're right. This is a place where folks can come out who love the idea of Halloween, but don't necessarily want it to be that scary, right? Absolutely. Family friendly fun. It has a fall fest kind of a vibe, but we still have your costume contest every day. We have Cowboys Dance Party, which is a huge hit with the kids. And what everybody cares about the most, Every single day, the last hour of the day, free trick-or-treating. That's, that's where you got me, free trick-or-treating, folks. And this is taking place every day. Um, what else can folks expect? What were the times? Where can they get tickets? Absolutely. So as you know, there is a train that runs through Breckenridge Park. And we also have the Scarecrow sing-along, brand new this year. And we're really excited about that. We also have photo ops everywhere. So if you're wanting that perfect family fall picture and you don't want to have to draw where the leaves might change, come to the zoo and you can get an absolutely fabulous family picture. But we're open every day, 9 a.m. to 5. And on Saturdays, we're open until 10, till 10, till 7, sorry, till 7. But yeah, one hour of trick-or-treating free every single day with multiple places to stop by and get your candy. That sounds absolutely amazing, Hope. Now, we couldn't be at the San Antonio Zoo if we weren't if we weren't going to visit with animals and I am visiting with some right here <laughs> and I believe these are cockroaches. They, they are. These are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Jonathan, you are going to be our special AAT uh, little guest here. Isn't he adorable? Adorable. I love them. I told you you were going to get to hang out with something really cute and cuddly today. You know, you said they were cute and cuddly. I was not expecting this. This is really, really cool. Well, so many people just think they're so creepy, but these guys serve the environment so well. They're decomposers, so they really help us with uh, keeping trees and getting rid of all of that decomposing uh, wildlife wow. that's out there and letting new things grow. But don't worry, we do actually have a cute and fun so John here, come on over here, John. We have Notch. Notch is a Virginia opossum. Now, unfortunately, cockroaches are on her menu, but not these guys. So she's probably eyeballing us going, ooh, this looks pretty tasty. <laughs> but so Notch, cute. she's still young. She's only about six months old, and she was rescued right here on zoo grounds. You know, this is North America's only marsupial. That means that they have a pouch just like kangaroos. And if we bring Hillary right over here, last but not least, we've got Matilda. She Matilda. is not an owl. Gorgeous. She's actually a tawny frog mouth because of that really wide mouth she has. They're found in Australia. And you know what? If you come visit us every single weekend through Zubu, we do creature feature shows. So we bring out animals so just cool. like these guys. And it's a wild time. So cool. Thank you so much, Kat. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Max, Sarah, I'm tossing this back to you. In the meantime, I'm going to hang out with my buddy here. And I'm going to name him Paco. Oh. Back to you on the studio. Paco, okay. <laughs> uh, Jonathan is very, very calm, brave. cool, and collected. Yes, we were all like, eh, yeah, my God. go, Jonathan. Yeah. What that was that last sweet. one? Would you call it a seal bird? It looked like a seal bird. It was so cute. <laughs> she was it so did. cute. Matilda, right? Definitely yeah. it beat out the cockroach. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, I got a spooky side of my own, all oh. right? Take a look at this picture sent in through our KSAT Connect feature. Kind of looks like a really spooky October night. This is a 22-degree halo around the moon, also called a moon halo. It happens because of ice crystals that make up these high thin cirrus clouds that you see out there today and last night. It bends the light to make it look like there's a circle or a halo around the moon. This can happen during the daytime too, uh, but a really cool picture. Thank you for sending that in. Speaking of those cirrus clouds, we're going to have them with us all day long coming in off of the Pacific. Uh, now it's not going to keep us completely insulated and cool. Instead, we're going to see some sunshine through those cirrus clouds and we will actually warm up nicely. We're experiencing the coldest morning we've had since April, 
but this afternoon we'll be looking at afternoon high temperatures in the low to mid 70s. 73 in Kerrville, 75 in Uvalde, 79 in Del Rio, 77 in Catula, 73 here in San Antonio for the high. Outside right now you can see a mixture of those mid and high level clouds out there. 49 degrees. We got down to 48 earlier this morning. Winds a little bit calmer than yesterday, but still from the west northwest at about 8 to 10 miles per hour. Even chillier up in the higher elevations. 41 in Birdie Stage, 41 in Kerrville, 41 in Bandera, 54 though in Divine, 56 at Sensen, 48 in New Braunfels, 55 in Pleasanton, 54 the wake up temperature in Del Rio. It's even in the 30s up in Junction in the Hill Country this morning. Now today, as I just mentioned, we're going to keep those cirrus clouds out there, giving the sky mostly cloudy and milky hue. Uh, 67 around noon and then 73 for that afternoon high. Northeast winds at 5 miles per hour. Sun will set at 701. If you have Sunday night plans, bring that jacket with you because it's going to get cool pretty quickly. We'll be back into the 60s and 50s by 10 p.m. Look how quiet quiet it is across the United States. There is a high pressure system in place creating sinking air uh, behind that cold front that moved through on Friday and gave us our first real taste of fall. Now air moves in a clockwise fashion around a high and high usually means dry and so dew points are low. That's why it feels great outside. But as that high moves off to the east again, remember the wind moves in a clockwise fashion around a high. We're going to pull in that Gulf moisture and so we've got Two more days here with lower humidity before this moisture moves back in on Tuesday, today and tomorrow. And then Tuesday, you'll notice a bit more mugginess. Meanwhile, by Thursday, another cold front is going to approach from the north, moving through North Texas. It's still unclear if this is going to have enough oomph to make it to San Antonio. But what we do know is that it should fire off a few isolated showers and storms. Uh, and we could get some of those outflow boundary storms that we see uh, sometimes from North Texas. So looking at the rest of the forecast again, beautiful today, beautiful tomorrow after a chilly start, although not as cold as this morning and then mid 80s for most of the week uh, and isolated showers and storms by Thursday through Saturday. We'll keep you updated. Hopefully we'll get the pollen count in here shortly and I'll be able to show you that in the next half hour. Max and Sarah. Oomph. Oomph. That's good. That was That's on cue. Oomph. We didn't even coordinate that. <laughs> Look at that. Thank you, Sarah. 821, 51 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA, learning the history of ofrendas during Day of the Dead and the significance of displaying the salt. Plus, you don't have to go very far to get spooked out after the break. Details about one of the most haunted hotels across the country, and it's right here in San Antonio. Max, do you believe in ghosts? I decline to answer. Well, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hardcore believer. Okay, well, there are some known, known ghosts oh, that no. reside inside the Emily Morgan Hotel, and it's downtown. All right, so it's actually one of the most haunted hotels across the country. So if you dare, you can actually book an overnight stay. It is on East Houston Street, one of the 25 most haunted hotels across the country, not to mention the experience perfect for Halloween. But it also holds a lot of history. Mm. I think that's what makes it haunted, the history. Mm -hmm. So you can read all about it as well as find the link to book a night to stay there, mm. ksat.com. There you go. Are you interested? No, I believe in ghosts, but I just kind of let them do their own thing. Yeah, that's right. I don't I go don't, looking for them. You never go looking. That's how every horror but film you find starts. Trouble. Mm. 825, 51 degrees out. All right, this is an unusual way to be buried. <laughs> just ahead, why one man made sure his grave had a window to look out of. Plus, the latest when it comes to the vaccine across the country, the latest on requirements, how some people are reacting. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Sunday. I'm Max Mass. And I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, October 17th. Thank you so much for waking up with us on mm -hmm. this beautiful Sunday morning, 51 degrees. You should probably plan to spend some time outside today, right, Sarah? <laughs> I think so. Got to soak up this weather while we can, right? It, absolutely beautiful outside. In fact, the sunrise this morning was gorgeous. I hustled up uh, three flights of stairs to get this picture here. A gorgeous, gorgeous shot of the sunrise this morning at our KSAT 12 studios in downtown San Antonio. If you have pictures of the sunrise that you'd like to share, go ahead and drop them in our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. It's called Pins right there at the bottom. You can drop a picture. We might just show them on air. Uh, but yeah, a beautiful sunrise and a chilly sunrise at that. It's 41 in Kerrville, 42 in Comfort. 
50 in Port SA, 48 at JBSA Randolph. We're officially in the 40s at the airport, 49 degrees, 48 in New Braunfels, and 55 in Divine. Head to those pumpkin patches today if you want to get your fall pictures because we're really not going to see temperatures get too warm today. In fact, it should stay in the 60s through about 11 and then into the afternoon. Uh, we'll be getting a low 70s for the afternoon high temperatures uh, today. So very nice weather with light winds as opposed to yesterday when we were dealing with some breezy conditions. This weather will actually last a little bit longer, but humidity is bound to return. I've got a look ahead coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, police are trying to figure out what happened that led to a woman being stabbed at a bus stop early this morning, but they're getting conflicting stories. So this happened around 2.30 this morning near the corner of Veracruz and South Brazos Street, just west of downtown. Officers received a call from a woman who said she had been stabbed. When they arrived at the scene, they found the woman bleeding heavily from her arm. She was taken to University Hospital. She's expected to be okay. Officers were getting different stories from the woman, so they are still trying to sort out the details. A San Antonio family distraught after their loved one, 31 year old Sarah Silva, allegedly shot and killed by her boyfriend just this week. Now, Silva just started working as a teacher for La Petite Academy. Now, San Antonio police say Silva and 30 year old Evan held. They were arguing when Silva locked herself in a bedroom with her 71 year old mother at their home on El Monte Boulevard. Police say held fired several rounds into that door, killing Silva's mother. Now, Silva's family said they had no idea Silva may have been in an abusive relationship with Held, and now the family wants this tragedy to serve as a reminder to other victims of abuse. Love's blind sometimes, and you you won't want to reach out at, for help. Which, if there's any women out there that are being abused, they should walk out the relationship. Don't wait, you know, walk away from that because y'all don't need that in y'all's lives. Now, Sarah was killed. Her mother also in that room when the shooting happened. Held ended up turning himself into the Dallas police after he was wanted for murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He is awaiting extradition back to Bear County. In the meantime, Silva's family raising funds to help with funeral expenses. Next Saturday, they are holding a plate sale at their home. Well, daycare vans, that's the latest score for the catalytic converter thief who hasn't been caught in over a month. Bernie police say they believe the woman responsible is 36 year old Heather Delgado. In a surveillance video, you can see a car pull up to the Apple Tree Day School just before 5 a.m. on August 31st. A woman is mostly seen going in and out of frame, putting things in her car, a man appearing to help her. Then at some point you see them put a catalytic converter in the trunk. Frustration is an understatement for Lloyd Voigt, the owner of the Apple Tree Day School, saying this is the second time this year his vans have been targeted. After the first time this year, we added more cameras to the outside, so it really was very helpful. We have 25 cameras inside and outside of our facility. The increased security cameras didn't prevent the second theft, but it is assisting police in looking for possible suspects. Bernie police believe Delgado is responsible for a number of catalytic converter thefts in the last month. If and when Delgado is caught, she'll be facing charges for theft and criminal mischief. If you have any information, you're asked to call Bernie Police. That number, 830-249-8645. Now to that deadly shooting in Houston involving three Harris County deputies. One deputy shot and killed two more injured. Authorities say the weapon used in yesterday's ambush at a nightclub was an AR-15 style rifle. The deputies were actually working security jobs at the club. Two of them responded to the report of a robbery outside just around 2 a.m. While the deputies were trying to arrest someone, a man with an AR-15 style rifle came from behind. A third deputy also shot when he came to help. Deputy Kareem Atkins was one of the first deputies shot, ended up dying from those injuries at the hospital. The other two deputies recovering from their injuries. So far, authorities still searching for the suspect responsible. In your morning headlines, more vaccine requirements being made in big cities around the country, even as COVID cases fall. ABC's Christine Sload shows us the battles in different areas and how some residents are feeling about it. 
As COVID case numbers continue to fall nationally, more vaccine requirements continue to go into effect. But not everyone is willing to roll up their sleeves. In Chicago, a court battle is heating up between the city and police force, about half of which is unvaccinated. We've seen from uh, the Fraternal Order of Police and particularly the leadership is a lot of misinformation, a lot of half-truths and frankly flat-out lies in order to induce an insurrection. The city announcing those who do not get vaccinated vaccinated will be placed on a no pay status. The police union filing a motion to dismiss the mayor's complaint. In Seattle, the police department is making preparations ahead of a Monday deadline for all officers to provide proof of vaccination. The concern that the department may lose hundreds of officers who are choosing not to get vaccinated. In Everett, Washington, about 200 Boeing employees staged a protest against the company's vaccine mandate that will go into effect on December 8th. Meantime, mask rules are now loosened in San Francisco. Masks no longer required in some environments if everyone is fully vaccinated and there aren't more than 100 people. It's a nice feeling that the city decides it's safe for us to take our masks off again. And it's just a nicer feeling to connect with colleagues on that level. And this week, a CDC panel will meet on recommendations for both Moderna and Johnson & Johnson boosters. If authorized, the boosters could be out at the end of the week. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Also in your morning headlines, Hertz making a move to go public again this fall after the rental car company emerged from bankruptcy this summer. It continues to profit from record high rental car rates as demand for travel has returned following the pandemic. Most rental car companies were forced to sell off most of their vehicles to raise the cash they needed to survive when air travel was grounded due to the pandemic. Demand remains high because a chip shortage is limiting the number of new cars that can be built, continuing to lower the supply of rental cars. A threatened strike to shut down TV and film production was averted just hours before yesterday's midnight deadline. That's right. The International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employee Union, they had threatened to walk out over benefits, wages, and safety standards. While the exact details not being released, film and TV production is expected to be able to continue. The deal only applies to the West Coast production as negotiations continue for workers in other parts of the country. Union workers will also need to ratify the agreement before it is official. Well, Motley Crue frontman Vince Neal recovering from broken ribs after he fell off a stage in Tennessee this week. So Neal was performing a solo show when the accident happened right there. Yeah. So even though he broke his ribs in the fall, Neal wanted to continue go on with the show. But Neal was talked out of it because he was having difficulty breathing. The band played on with guitarist Jeff Blondo taking over the lead vocals. All right, this is a story you've been talking about throughout the morning. I, this is it. This, this is, is it. so creepy, but I really like it. So a grave with a view. So check this out, this very unusual plot in a Vermont cemetery. Hmm, Dr. Timothy Clark's grave has a window, so mourners can look down and, you know, check them out. Of course it has a window. So Dr. Clark, who died in the 1800s, had an extreme fear of being buried alive. In addition to the window, he was buried with a chisel in case, mm. you know, he needed to break out. Of course. And his unusual tomb even has a bell he could ring, you know, just in case. <laughs> but all this time, Dr. Clark has been able to rest in peace. It seems he was never in any grave danger. Did you have fun with that one? I did. Grave danger. So I don't know if I want to. Well, maybe I do. You know what? I want a window. So. <laughs> Max, so he, remember that. He has a bell. Like, he can ring the bell. No, only he can ring the bell. Okay. Only he has a chisel. Can people outside hear the bell? That's the purpose. Interesting. What happens if you're walking to the graveyard and start hearing the bell? That's the run. rumor. You have to run. <laughs> the time now it's uh, 839, 52 degrees out. Okay, after the break, we're catching. Oh. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's Jonathan Cotto. He was holding that giant roach. He was very brave. But he is live at the San Antonio Zoo for this year's Zubu Event Hill tell us more about it and speaking of outdoors hopefully you don't see any cockroaches beautiful shot out there 52 degrees to start your morning what does the rest of the weekend look like we're gonna check in with sarah spivey just a bit ksat 12 presents another day of the dead story building the ofrenda Brought to you by Toyota. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. When honoring your loved one, don't forget the salt. 
When a spirit makes its journey back to the world of the living, it's believed salt protects their soul from corruption during their stay. Salt also represents the earth, which is one of the Aztec's four elements of nature. It's usually placed in clay vessels or in the shape of a cross on the bottom level beside other elements of purification. When your loved one's visit is over, make sure they're pure for their journey back. So don't forget the salt. As COVID cases fall, the FDA debates boosters. Dr. Fauci, what you need to know. Plus, supply chain pain. Martha's on the road. The plan to end gridlock. And the infamous spy telling all to George. The special preview Sunday on ABC's This Week. Good morning and welcome back. October 17th, so just two weeks away from Halloween. Can't wait. One of the spookier sites we've seen this morning, we've talked about haunted houses, we've talked about costumes. John Dakota was holding the cockroach earlier. That's pretty spooky to me. I was terrified. So he's at the San Antonio Zoo uh, giving a preview of Zoo Boo. And Jonathan, oh. earlier you made a friend, Bacle, the cockroach. <laughs> you were very brave. Oh, yeah. What do you have Bacle, now? <laughs> what happened very, to very brave. Well, <laughs> Paco went back to uh, his home because it's a little bit chilly for him. So we're, he's going to come out and play later. And we have food here for him, so he's going to really love this. But hope oh, we are, you know, this fun filled activity is just more than just for the kids, right? Absolutely. We want to make sure the parents have as much fun as the kids. And what better way to do that than with some signature cocktails celebrating the season. And so what you see here in front of you is a smorgasbord of some of the offerings we have from our amazing culinary team. And we have our black magic here, which is charcoal infused black vodka. We have our bad juju. And the only thing good about that is the rum in it. And we have in the green are embalming fluid drink, which I'm sure is a crowd pleaser, and that is Midori based. But everybody in San Antonio loves a Michelada, so don't forget we have the goat sucker. Comes with teeth. Very important if you are a chupacabra. But look at all of the other fun things we have here. You, we have gift shops, and so if you can come get your zoo boo bag, and you can do your free trick-or-treating, and then we have a pastry chef on staff, and we've got these hot Holiday macaroons, which are adorable. And I believe right down here for That's, you. I have to try this. Max, Sarah, take a look at these cupcakes. It, they really inspire me to have a Halloween theme party now because look how amazing these cupcakes are. It looks like they have glass, but they're not really glass. I'm going to take a stab and see. No pun intended. Mm, no pun intended. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Good. Sharp and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Shards of glass cupcakes, only here at San Antonio Zoo's Zoo Boo. But yes, and we also have lunch, so come and get your chupacabra burger, fresh jalapenos on that one, and spicy pepper jack cheese. As you can see, it's just so much fun, and we want to make sure when you're walking around that you have good food, you have good fun. It makes memories for the families for generations. Thank you so much, Hope. Max, Sarah, back to you in the I studio. Mean, I'm going to continue to eat. Uh, uh, this shard glass cupcake, yeah. um, and I did sanitize my hands after, after holding Paco, by the way. Yeah, that was good. That was a good question. I need the chupacabra burger. I knew You it. can have the, the shard glass I cupcake. No, I want the adult bevies. The adult bevies. Charlie was texting us. We got adult bevies, and of course, Sarah Costa. Who's excited about yeah, it. Yeah, very excited. Again, Who burger. wouldn't be? Yeah. A no. lot going on at a.m. Yeah, it's cold outside right now. If you couldn't tell by Jonathan wearing that jacket, temperatures have fallen into the 40s in many places. But I thought I'd give you a check of the aquifer because, again, we had a lot of rain this past week, and the aquifer is still responding to that rainfall. The aquifer up 8 tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, now two feet above the monthly average, and the 10-day average continues to rise as well. Now, I have to say, we're still under stage one water restrictions until instructed other Otherwise, but now that that 10 day average has gone above 660 feet, hopefully we'll get some motion in that direction soon. Outside right now, you can see the high thin cirrus clouds out there, mostly cloudy skies because of that milky hue to the sky. 49 degrees. We got down to 48 this morning. So that is the coolest temperature 
since April 21st. That's 179 days, almost six months, exactly almost six months. And so temperatures have just really responded to that cold front, cooling down because of the drier conditions and the calmer winds conditions last night as well. We are starting to see temperatures rise, although a little gradually this morning. 42 in Kerrville and in Comfort, 48 in Rio Medina, 48 at JBSA Randolph. It is 56 though down at Stinson and 59 in Pleasanton, 48 in New Braunfels, 54 in Del Rio, 54 in Creases Springs, 55 degrees in Kennedy. A great day. Soak up some time outdoors if you can. Fire up the grill for football. Make sure to maybe make a pot of chili or uh, some soup because it feels a lot like fall out there today. And we'll get up to about 73 degrees for the high temperature still in the 60s through about noon, though. And winds will not be as breezy as they were yesterday. Winds actually only from the northeast at about five miles per hour. Our sun will set at 701 and notice how quickly our temperatures fall. So if you have late night plans outdoors, make sure to plan accordingly for the drop in temperatures. We are seeing those cirrus clouds moving in from the Pacific. A high pressure system at the surface keeping out showers and storms across much of the United States. It is fairly quiet across much of the U.S. And as I've been talking about all morning, the air moves around a high pressure system in a clockwise fashion. And so as this high moves off to the east, it it's going to be bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture so that by Tuesday, once again, it's going to be a bit muggy with dew points back into the 60s. But until then, dew points will be in the 40s and it'll feel really nice outside. So we've got today and we've got tomorrow with low humidity and it'll be noticeable on Tuesday, especially in the mornings. Uh, we'll see some low clouds in the mornings and temperatures in the mornings will be back up into the 60s. But we do have one more chilly morning tomorrow morning near 50 degrees. As far as rainfall goes this week, we're going to have a couple of shots, but it'll be isolated rain Thursday, Friday, and even into Saturday as well. But no huge rainmakers in our near future. No significant cold fronts in our near future either. So today is actually going to be the coolest day of the next seven days, the one that feels most like fall. So if you want to get some fall activities done in this kind of weather, do it today. Thank you, Sarah. Pro football coverage. All right, we've Fight talked a lot about UTSA. 7-0, and oh, they destroyed Rice 45 to nothing in homecoming. But now it's time to talk pro football. We got two big games today. Cowboys taking on Patriots, 325. And then, of course, the Texans and the Colts. Wait for it, wait for it. There we go. Apparently, if you don't win a game, you don't get a graphic. Uh, they... <laughs> Uh, they get their chance at winning the second game today at noon in Lu Lucas Oil Stadium. Do you think the Cowboys have a chance? I just know they're really good. They're very good this year. But I don't know. Are the Patriots really good? They're not that good this year. They're fine. So they're there's fine. a chance. There's no Tom Brady there, remember. Yeah, that's so true. it's, you know, Mac, we'll see. It's a rookie quarterback. You never know. All right, it's 851 and 52 degrees. The term Chicano is derived from indigenous groups, and while it's been around for decades, it's a term that has had a bit of a rebirth. Tomorrow on GMSA, more about the origins and the future of the term. All right, let's take a look at those lotter numbers. 990, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 9, 4, 6, 8, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 4, 15, 21, 24, 32, Texas Lotto. 26, 27, 32, 36, 37, 42. And Powerball, 30, 31, 41, 42, 48, Powerball 3, Power Play 3. In the news you need to know before you go, a man is dead following a fiery crash on 410 in Roosevelt. Police say close to midnight, a man in a vehicle rear-ended an 18-wheeler and his car burst into flames, trapping the man inside. Because of that, firefighters were not able to rescue him. The driver of the 18-wheeler was not injured. Police do not know if alcohol was a factor at this time. We just got the pollen count in this morning. Molds are down from yesterday. They're still moderate at 540. Ragweed is low at 60. And low humidity will be with us tomorrow. Another chilly start tomorrow morning as well. But then the humidity returns by the middle of the week. Look at that. Rain Thursday, Friday. Possibly. All smiles. Yeah. Enjoy this weather today. Have a great day.